Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for the little bit of the late start. Got Coach Monk in here for his weekly press conference. So, Coach, if you want to open us up with the opening statement. Good afternoon, everybody. It's sure nice to be in here after a win again. Um, I, I, the, the weeks are always uh, more enjoyable coming off of a victory. I'm really proud of our team and uh, and our staff and 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 just uh, overcoming some adversity on Saturday and uh, we, we we faced some uh, on Saturday that uh, we probably didn't didn't face in the in the opening football game. So um, you know that that second quarter just really didn't go very well for us. We had uh, we had a, you know some three and outs and a turnover and some foolish penalties and. And uh, some things didn't go our way, but uh, really, really encouraged to see our guys come out in the second half and play well enough to win the football game and make some plays in every phase. And uh, and proud of our team for the victory. So uh, it's hard to win. It's hard to win a game, and uh, and they've got an athletic, well-coached football team, and and uh, we we benefited from just having had the opportunity to practice and get prepared through preseason camp and and. Uh, and get ready for for them. We we had a game under our belt, and I think our guys just felt uh, a, a bit of confidence after having had a win in the opening game. So uh, glad to get a win, and and now getting prepared for Cincinnati uh, a, a week from this Saturday. We'll start with questions here from Rich Demarco. Hey, Coach! Congratulations on the two wins. Would you say that the first two games are your team taking care of business, or have they exceeded? maybe your expectations for these first two games? There's been plenty of things that, uh, that our team's done well that I've been proud of and, uh, and, and we've easily recognized uh, getting a lot of takeaways on defense. Uh, that's, that's been uh, really good. I think we've got six on the season now. Um, certainly in the first game, scoring on every drive uh, of that game. Uh, in both games, controlling the clock and being able to to run the fullback and and uh, and and a power running game, just to chunk away at the defense and keep that clock running and 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 play our brand of football. I mean, there's there's been things in every phase. I think we've we've uh, for the most part. Saturday was an exception. There was a couple times where they had some kick returns that uh, we were a little disappointed, but. We had guys in position. We missed some tackles on those plays, but have covered kicks well. Uh, had guys in position. Obviously, the the fake that that uh, kind of turned the game there for us. It was a ten point game, and we were able to execute that fake and put ourselves in scoring position and, and stretch the lead. So there's things that they've done really well. But there's there's just lots and lots of things that we've got to do better, and we're going to have to do all of those things where we're where we're feeling like we're falling a little short. A whole lot better against Cincinnati. Uh, this this uh, an outstanding football team, top 25 team, well coached, uh, veteran guys. They're they're big. Uh, I looked at their defense today and 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 looked at their their uh, their depth chart that they sent us. And holy smokes, I mean they're just a great looking football team physically. So uh, very fast. Uh, they got skill guys, whether it be offense or the kick returner. I'm just really impressed with their team. Coach Fickle's a great coach. And Jeff, the turnovers, they're going more back your way this year. I know last year there were some challenges in that way. Do you attribute it to anything in preseason, execution, mental, holding on to the football and forcing turnovers? I, I think that there's, there's an effort uh, being put toward that. But I, I, I feel like there's always been – uh, that's always been something that uh, has been a priority for us. And some years, you just, uh, in some games, you just seem to to get more than others. But uh, you know, it, it, it's it's different than uh, I think a guy just handing a ball over to us or pitching a ball on the ground or or dropping it on accident. We've taken some balls away. We've stripped the ball and knocked it loose, and that's that's really encouraging to see. And see our guys making that effort. Um, I'm disappointed about the one turnover we had on Saturday. Uh, I I wish we wouldn't turn it over at all. But we had a couple other balls on the ground, and uh, and that's that's one of the things that's worrisome to me. We we can't turn the ball over 
and uh, and hope to win football games. That's something that uh, that we harp on with our with our team, and it's not just winning the turnover battle. It's not turning the ball over at all. Thanks, Coach. As a reminder, mute your line if you are not asking a question. Please remember to mute your line if you are not asking a question. We'll start here with Ken Kreitzer. Oh, good afternoon, Coach. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about uh, the uh, team's reaction to the cancellation of the BYU game. Uh, came up uh, late Saturday night. Uh, uh, and if there was any thought about uh, being able to have another game uh, this weekend. We were disappointed that we weren't going to be able to play, and uh, it's, that's a that's a top 25 team and, and a great opportunity for us to be tested as a program and, and, and try to measure up. Uh, we saw their opening game, uh, and, and they are just a tremendous football team, physical and well-coached. Kalani's done a tremendous job with that program, and, and uh, they've had some big victories under him, and and it really looks like they got a great football team. And so we, we, we really were hoping for an opportunity, one, because they're a great team, and two, we, we want to play. And our guys have worked really hard, and particularly our, our veteran players, our senior players, uh, who, who want to play as many games as they can. Um, we made every attempt that we could to try to find someone to play this weekend. Um, Mike Buddy and Bob Beretta, they, I think they're still working at it and still hopeful that we might be able to, to get someone to play. There are teams who uh, have the weekend off uh, or don't have a game this weekend that I think could play, have chosen not to play, uh, or may not feel like they're prepared to play. But uh, we, um, and we, we attempted, but, but uh, so far we have not uh, had any luck finding an opponent. So if, if that's the case, and we don't, then we'll, we'll take this week that, uh, to, to prepare for, for Cincinnati and kind of double down getting ready for that game. And Coach, if I could just follow up, is there any thought about playing the BYU game on the open date in November or Thanksgiving weekend? We've, we've discussed it, uh, but it's not something we're, we're committing to right now. I think we've got to look at where we're at here in a, a couple of weeks down the road and, and just see what happens with the rest of the football season. There, there's certainly a lot of unknowns and a lot of possibilities that uh, as we, we get into the weeks to come and we look at, uh, at the other games, particularly the CIC games and, and the effects of, of what may happen with this virus and what we need to do with each open weekend that we have, I think we've, we've kind of got to consider that. So uh, we would love to play that game. They're a great team, and uh, it, it would be uh, just a great opportunity for our program to play a team of that caliber. And, and if we can do it, we'll, we'll try to do it. But uh, right now, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got our schedule pretty set right now. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Next question from Charles Grievous. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Uh, I want to piggyback off of um, uh, Ken's question regarding the BYU cancellation game or postponement of that game. Uh, is there anything that you and the staff put forth to ensure uh, that there is not a letdown uh, for a group of young men who we all assume were anxious, as you mentioned, to, to take on visiting BYU, who, by the way, is, again, you mentioned top 25 and now preparing for Cincinnati? Oh, I think... I think there's, uh, there was some excitement certainly leading up to that game that we would have a chance to play them. And, and our guys all, all saw their opening game as well. We had a chance there on, on that Monday night to, to sit down on TV and, or sit down in front of a TV and watch it. And, and you see what a great team they are. Uh, we, we, we hoped we'd have an opportunity. Uh, but that's not anything we can control. So. Not that I can control the emotions of these young men, but I do try to control their expectations or, or manage their expectations in that they don't put all their eggs in, in the basket of, hey, we're going to play, B, play BYU, and if we don't get to play them, gosh, we're going to be so disappointed and we're going to have a letdown. I think there's plenty of things we need to do to get prepared for Cincinnati 
if if we can't find an opponent here sometime today, which I think today is probably um, this would be the latest we could do it. Um, but if if we are playing Cincinnati, there's plenty for us to do to prepare for them. They 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 too are an outstanding team, very well coached and very talented. Thank you. And my follow up and final question: um, When observers assess the success of the program, uh, offense and defense are really the first uh, to come to mind, and special teams is often an afterthought, if you will. Uh, that being said, can you provide kind of a the Reader's Digest version of how special teams have played in the first two games of, of your season? Special teams is often an afterthought of, of a lot of people watching the game. Um, but I, I believe there's a statistic that, that one in every six or seven plays or, or every seventh play or something like that is a special teams play. So they're, they're a big part of the game. Uh, they're not a third of the game necessarily in terms of the number of plays there are, but, but they're a big part of the game. And when there's a kickoff play uh, or there's a punt play, the potential is there that those, gain, th those plays can gain 40 or, or more yards per play. And there aren't many offensive plays that average 40 yards or more per play. So when people talk about it being a field position game and, and, and football is a field position game, the kicking plays become very important. After kicking plays, there, there's a, obviously a spot on the field that the ball is placed for the next, the next set of downs for the offense for one team or the other. The team that wins the field position battle after kicking plays often wins the game at a, at a rate over 70%. So it's really important that we win the kicking game, try to win the kicking game, and, and make that phase of our team uh, a priority. And so we've got a lot of guys that, that, that start on offense and defensive positions, but yet still are, are in there on the special teams plays. Uh, Brandon Walters is a perfect example. Started a slot back on Saturday, he blocked a punt. Um, so I, I think for us, we realize how important the field position is for our team, particularly the style of offense that we run. And, uh, and so that I, I, think that, I think that our special teams play has been good the first couple of weeks, and, and that's probably contributed to our success. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Next question from John Kikis. Hey, Coach. Uh, how important do you think the bubble has been to uh, your success so far? Has it given you an edge? Are, are teams ready for your physicality? I think everybody else is physical, too. We're not the only physical football team in the country. Um, what we've been able to do is continue to practice. We haven't had any breaks in the, the – uh, the preseason camp or our preparation and we've been fortunate there that we that we've been able to to remain healthy and and uh, and not allow this this virus to creep in but it it happens so easily and, and and it can happen to us so all we can do is continue to try to do our very best to be vigilant with the things that uh, that we know are right the guidelines we've been given and uh and hope for the best that we'll we'll remain healthy. But uh, just being able to practice every day and and improve, and I think that's that's contributed to the success. Uh, like I said, I I think all teams are, are are trying to play physical. It's not easy to win a football game. Middle Tennessee's got a, a well coached, talented football team. They're a physical team. ULM's a physical team. Um, we just we we played pretty good on those two days. Good enough to win, and I hope it'll continue. Your approach uh, to this season has been was different from Navy's. Uh, I feel like that was a key because they did not have as much physical contact. You feel like I wasn't at their practices, so I can't really tell you. Um, I I know what we did, and we just did the best we could to get ready. Kenny's a great football coach, and uh, and Kenny's going to do what he thinks is best for his football team, and I'm going to do. What I think is best for mine, and uh, you know, there's there's things I've done uh, preparing my football team in the past that 
I said, gosh, I wish I would have done things a different way. And I know he, I read where he said the same thing. I wish maybe I'd have thought about doing some things a little bit differently or, but that's, that's who we are as coaches. We, we, we feel that sense of responsibility to our team. And I think Kenny was, was trying to do what he thought was right for his football team. And so that he, he's not to blame for that. He had to make the decision that was, that was best at the time. Coach. Next question from Ken McMillan. Jeff, uh, great uh, defensive showing so far this year. Uh, in a big picture sense, what are you seeing different compared to last season? Is it all approach or merely execution? Um, I think probably a little bit of both. But uh, you know, the, the, the guys are executing very well right now. And we're 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 really just in the elementary phases of of our defense because we didn't have any spring ball obviously we got a new defensive coordinator and uh in large part a new defensive staff so i i think they're doing a good job of of giving our guys things that they can handle and i think our players are playing really hard um and you know, we'll we'll see as the season goes along. Two games isn't a season. That it's it's just two games, and we played pretty well. Uh, we've made some mistakes, um, mistakes we can't make when we play Cincinnati. Um, so hopefully, we'll continue to improve and get get uh, get our guys playing at a high level, so we can match uh, the play of of a high level team like Cincinnati in two weeks. Nolan Cockrell had a big day Saturday. Can you elaborate on his performance, his development, and his importance to the team? He's always been a really tough guy. Uh, strong, determined, very intense player. And uh, it's exciting to see him having the season he is. He He's playing nose. He switches and plays end to some. He really is, uh, right now, probably the most productive guy um, because he's been able to play all of those positions. Um, he, he's, he's, uh, he's a good football player, and there's a lot of talented guys out there. There's a lot of guys that are taller, bigger, longer maybe, but I don't know if there's any tougher, and, uh, and he's just a good football player, and I'll take a good football player every time over, over a guy that's super talented or super long and doesn't, doesn't play as hard. This guy plays hard, and... And, uh, and is really strong and, and knows his position. He knows, he knows how to play his position in our defense. And that, uh, that I think really helps him be productive. Question now from Ken Kreitzer. Uh, Coach, thank you. After the game Saturday, we talked about the play Wilson Coteau, Coteau made on the fake punt and uh, why you had him do that. But I thought about the long snapper on that play. Uh, was that Kyle O'Connor? And what what did it take to make that snap correctly uh, since it's so different from the normal snap on a punt? Well, Kyle O'Connor was the uh, was the snapper, and uh, and he just it, probably the most difficult thing about the snap is taking a little bit off of it. He, he's typically snapping the ball as fast as he can to try to get it back there 15 yards to the punter. Or, Seven yards, seven and a half yards to the to the snap or to the uh, holder on a uh, on a PAT or field goal. So he's he's used to zipping it back there pretty quick, and he's got a guy like Cato or one of those other guys in the shield that aren't typically used to catching a shotgun snap, and he's got to give them one they can handle. So I thought he 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 really did a nice job with the velocity of it. It was something he could handle, and he put it in a good spot that, that didn't make it difficult on him. And, Coach, if I could ask, uh, uh, Amadeo West was scheduled to start at defensive end uh, Saturday, but I didn't see any stats for him. Is he okay? Uh, he, is he ready for the next game? Next oh, game? yeah. Amadeo's fine, perfectly fine. Just sometimes you get yourself in the mix, and you're able to make some plays, and sometimes not. And it uh, – those guys up front aren't always going to be loaded up with stats. And there's times where you don't see them show up in the stat sheet at all and they've played a great game. And 
he means so much to our team, so much to our defense, the culture of this program, his leadership. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things he does for our team that aren't in the stat sheet that make us a much better football team than, than, than we'd be without him. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Ken. Next question from John Kikis. Uh, we, we almost forgot you guys are ranked. What was the reaction to being ranked and the players too? Oh. Uh, I don't talk about that with our team because it doesn't matter where you're ranked in week two. It rank, matters where you're ranked in January. So we'll we'll play as hard as we can this year and just see what it looks like in January. Thanks, Coach. And final two questions from Ken McMillan. Uh, Jeff, back to BYU. Uh, was it more important to you to play this weekend, especially having the momentum from a win? or wait to play BYU later in the year? Oh, we just wanted to play. Um, we got a healthy football team right now. So I, I hope we'll stay healthy through the whole year. That's hard to do. And so while we're, we're healthy, we were just hoping to play. And, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's, that's, it's disappointing not to play. Our guys want to play. And, and with – the way things are going right now, some games being canceled. We've, it's week three, and we've already had a game canceled. I anticipate that this won't be the last time this happens during the season. So if it happens again, you start counting on your hand how many, how many opportunities you have. We don't want to lose opportunities. So we, we were anxious to play. It's, it's why when BYU had to cancel, we, just, we basically just said, we'll play anybody. Anybody that wants to play this weekend, we'll play you. And we couldn't get anybody to say, okay, we'll come play you. Or you come to we, – we'd have traveled to them. We, we want to play. Um, so I think, as I said, this is probably going to happen again, and we'd like to get as many games in as possible before maybe this happens to another team or us. Uh, the BYU coach said yesterday that the postponement was the right thing to do and very responsible. Uh, do you agree with that? It is. It's the right thing to do. And, uh, and I think that teams that are making that decision when they have uh, cases of COVID on their team and they've got to do the, 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 the quarantine with those that have been in, in close contact with them, it is the right thing to do. So if they feel like they've got enough players to, to play the game, they should. If they feel like they don't, it's going to put uh, their team in harm's way, um, not being prepared, then, then they shouldn't. And I'm, I'm in support of whatever is right for, for each team. They've got to make that decision. Any uh, roster changes or lineup changes or injury updates? Uh, not that I'm going to give you. <laughs> and on that note, thank you, everyone, for calling in and being a part of Coaches Weekly Teleconference. Have a good day.